What's good? Welcome back to another edition of Talk That Talk Podcast. I go by the name of Bacon. I got my co-host with me. Wolf Reasons in the building, baby. Wolf Reasons. <laughs> you weren't expecting that. You had no idea that was coming. I was kind of figuring it. I seen the bandana. I seen the... I said, is he about to like, how? Or is it just for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Wolf Reasons, I'm on the hunt, baby. My Lakers is hunting right now. Yes. And, my Raiders, and my Raiders is here this week, too. But we'll get into that. For the next time, but yeah, we yeah. hunting. Our teams are hunting right now, baby. We're trying to. We smell blood. No blood, and we and we travel in packs. You feel me? Shout out to the NWO, the Wolf Pack, WCW back in the day. Definitely, definitely. Uh, before we get into the show, we got some dope topics to talk about today. Before we get into the show, definitely want to uh, make awareness of the fires that's going around here up in Central Cali by Saber Lake. Uh, some folks have been uh, forced to evacuate, man. It's crazy out here. This, this year has been a year. we put it that way. This has been one of the craziest years God is putting the world on notice this year. Like, you have these years every blue moon. You know what I'm saying? But this year, this has been one of the craziest of craziest years by far. Bro, listen, I, like, the crazy thing is, is, uh, I started 2020 off with, with my wedding picture, right? So my wedding picture is like, you know, I see you 2020. But I didn't foresee it to be like this. Like, I did not. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm heading to 2020, 2020, the year of the vision, the 2020 vision, and we we was blind to what has transpired. Facts. So, uh, yeah, 2020 came in fast enough. That's why, you know, I'm hoping my unborn son is he he holds off and just comes out in 2021. Cause I don't want a 2020 baby. I don't I don't feel like I have to <laughs> feel like it's gonna give you a whole bunch of 2020 drama. <laughs> yeah, just I don't want them 2020 vibes with my son. You feel me? Like no. I I'm pushing 21 for everything. So hopefully 21 can become like his favorite number and all that I'm but I'm every Everything that I think of him is always 21. That's all I'm thinking is 2021. So, and 2020 has been wild. And, uh, yeah, and it's still not over. It's not. It's not. We were only in August. Oh, no, September. I'm, September. I'm, yeah. August. I'm, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah, you've been, you been you working too hard, bro. That's I'm all. Working you're working too hard. But, anyway, man, let's talk about these Los Angeles Lakers who put on an okay performance Last night against the Houston Rockets, they did get ran out the water game one. I mean, ran so ran so crazy. She probably didn't want to come back after that. <laughs> it was that. It was that fish. No, let, let me not say that because that just sounds bad. It wasn't. It wasn't the best. The best. Okay. Um. And so yesterday, the Lakers survived. I will say this: the Lakers did survive. Styles make fights, and yesterday the Lakers was able to play the way they want to play for predominantly of the game, but they did give up 46 points in the third quarter, and they was getting hit hard with some haymaking shots by Houston. But they was able to weather the storm, and LeBron James and Anthony Davis and the Lakers was able to put the game away. And even out the series, how do you feel about this series, Reza? I'm not going to move from what I've been saying since playoffs started. Coach. I gotta be consistent. Have I have I wavered? Just ask the question. Have I wavered? No. So I'm gonna remain consistent. Coaching. Like, if we have to double both James, Russ, and Eric Gordon, we have no chance of winning this series. I'm gonna just be 100. There's no reason why we should have to double all three. Next uh coaching uh thing that I'm mad at, rotations. Again, rotations don't make sense again. Like, I feel like we can play Houston style with our style mixed. So, you know, start AD at the five, start Morris at the four, Bron, uh, Danny Green or KCP and Ronda. I figure you just start that lineup. Hmm. The biggest thing is because I feel like Ronda and LeBron, I, even though I hate the LeBron-Rondo lineup, 
but I only hate it when LeBron is the offensive initiator because then Houston treats Rondo like Lou Dort. Mm-hmm. When Rondo had the ball, you saw the offense was a little better, and they couldn't just, like, not guard him because if you just not guard him, he got to his little spot in the mid-range, and he was knocking that thing down. Right. Like, Right. So I feel like if you're going to use that lineup, let Rondo be the predominantly predominantly ball handler. Let LeBron work off the ball. He had a few times when he was in the post and Rondo was able to give it to him. He was able to set up AD. I feel like the screen and roll between AD and LeBron could work. You know, all, you know it's just various things that can work with that lineup if you let Rondo be the initiator. And then the last thing is um, we were running some kind of one-two-two zone last night. It looked three two ish, but the commentator said one two two. You cannot trap out of that in the middle of the court mm. because when you do that, you're susceptible to give up elbow threes, mm-hmm. and Houston has nothing but shooters. So for the most part, it's more of a uh, a contain and collapse type thing, and you trap the corners, which allows for your rotation to be better. So um, I did like the mix up of defenses that the Lakers did, especially when Russell Westbrook's on the court because he's not a shooter like that. So it works to the Lakers' advantage in that regard. So those are my three coaching points that if Vogel wants to be good, uh, we can. If Vogel wants to win this series, he needs to do that. And also, my last thing is, if you notice, AD struggled in the first game yes. against PJ Tucker. Because he can't just back down P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker, a big dude, a little stroll dude. So what A.B. did to adjust this game is he faced him up. Now it's more about quickness and speed. Mm-hmm. And then A.B. is able to still shoot over it. So I do like the adjustment of A.B.'s game. I don't necessarily know if that was a coaching thing or an A.B. thing. So yeah. 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 those are my synopsis from the last two games. Yeah. Uh, and those were very, very accurate synopsis or synopsis from the games. I just feel like if, if the Lakers want to play these zones, then you have to play it accordingly to the people, like, who can't shoot the most efficiently. You know what I mean? Nice. Let nice. Russ shoot threes. Stop allowing Russ to get to where he wants to get, which is penetrate. Make him shoot threes. And he shot four for 15 yesterday. He had a horrible game. Um because he's just out of whack. I just think Russ is still rusty uh, to the to the to the degree. But I don't know. Russ used to have a mid range, but for some reason that thing then disappeared to a degree. He used to be able to come and hit that free throw mid range. That used to be his little. That used to be butter. That used to be his strong suit. But I don't know what happened. Did he stop shooting? Did he start working on it? But here's here's again. You know, if you're gonna double one person, just double James Hardy. Don't you ain't got to double Eric Gordon, all right? Eric Gordon, bro, he was so ex- he was Uh-oh. he was hitting you like he was and wanting, like you ain't got to do that, you know. Just double James Harden if you're gonna double anybody and live with your results from other people. Stop over committing, and I think that's what the Lakers are doing, they're over committing on defense, and they that's why they get all out of whack and out of placement and out of alignment when it comes to defensive help because they're doing too much helping. They're overly helping instead of just trusting in yourself. Hey, if the dude hits a contested three, you got to live with that, all right? But when you give up easier threes and easy backdoor cuts and easy layups, then that's a different story or whatever the case may be. But, you know, we will see. Game three is tomorrow, and we will see – or tonight, I should say. Game three is tonight, and we will see if the Lakers are able to come back from the – Deficit or not deficit, but take a two one lead, right? Yeah, man. This, I mean, like I said, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Uh, so we'll see. Now, moving on to uh, the Clippers and the Nuggets. Um, they play, I believe, tonight. Yes, Nuggets, Nuggets, Clippers tonight. Yes, they play. Possibly tonight. no Joker, huh? No Joker, possibly. I swear the Clippers are getting the easiest road to the championship than anybody. They didn't play against Porzingis, mm-hmm. right? They only played a few games with Porzingis, and they Luka got hurt. They bought, possibly about to play without Joker a few games. So 
they are getting the, the luck of, bro, if the Clippers don't get to the Western Conference Finals, they ain't got no excuses. Yeah, the, the Clippers got them uh, 2012, 13 Warrior vibes. Mm-hmm. Remember the Warriors went on their run and they played Memphis without Conley. And then they played somebody without somebody. And then those when they got to the finals and played LeBron without Kyrie and Kevin Love. Like, yeah. the Clippers got them vibes right now. Right. And it's like, the Clippers going to have the, the bubble vibes on top of the injury vibes? Yeah. They championship, if it, ha- it goes as it's looking, they, got, they, they championship a little tan. And you can't have bubble head injury vibes. Exactly. I feel like, you know, that's gonna have to be a little little tainted. But I mean, uh the Nuggets show their offensive explosion or their offensive firepower. Right. Um Jokic and Murray both had like 20 plus in the first half, struggled in the third quarter. Jesus Christ. Or oh, they struggled in the second half. Well, I just say third quarter, they struggled they, in the second they half. Struggled. They held on to that. It was like <laughs> it was winning the fight. And then at the last minute, they almost lost that thing. They was on the rope like, oh, oh fight back, fight back. But hey, shout out to my man, Harris. Harris. Harry Harris. Harris. G-H is, is saying, hey, hey, I ain't scared of these Clippers. Mm. I ain't scared of these Clippers. And he was talking his stuff, too. So I got to give him props on that, man. He had some big threes laid down in the stretch uh, for Denver Nuggets, man. I just feel like with the Clippers – the Nuggets can match up well because they got height. They got the length. And they got an inside. If jo- if the Joker can play healthy and be okay, or whatever the case may be, they can they can give the Clippers trouble in the inside. That's always been the Clippers' issue is no inside presence. They don't have an inside presence, but they have elite wings with, you know, um, Kawhi and Paul George. But as far as, like, the inside game, Montrez does what he can – for his size, but he's still an undersized big man. He's just a motor. He's a guy that's going to come out there. He's like a P.J. Tucker without the threes, per se. He's going to get rebounds. He's going to get the hustle plays. He's going to play defense. He's going to do the best he can to play defense on, on taller bigs. He's going to make them uh, fluster them as much as he can, but it's still undersized. When he play against a solid, uh, you know, offensive savvy big man that can get their own buckets, then he will struggle. He was yes. struggling against them. Yes. That's just what it is. You, you can't teach physics. As simple as that. You can make it hard for those players, but you can't teach physics. And, and so I think the Clippers, without Jokic, they're going to win tonight's game. But if Jokic uh, or the Joker can play, they, they may have some trouble. Yeah, I mean, I, if you really look at it, man, they really contain Kawhi. Uh, they end up snapping Kawhi's 47 game streak of 15 plus points in a playoff game. Mm. Um, uh, Hell, Kawhi, I think he was like four for 17, four for 18 shooting. So they really did uh, a number on Kawhi, but I'm going to look at it like this. I feel like Kawhi just had a bad game. I'm not going to really attribute a lot of Denver defense. I just think it was just one of those nights. And superstars are allowed to have one of those nights. Right. If, you look at, if you look at that man's first series against Dallas, it was – them, them numbers is – Yeah, them, them numbers is crazy. Like, I still I, – I looked at the numbers just again recently. Like, he did what? And because it was quiet. It wasn't, like, real loud and, like, oh, he's, he's a flamethrower. Shout out to Kevin Harlan. But <laughs> it was, you know, it wasn't one of those situations. It was a so just of Huh? It was a worker 30. Yeah. And so um, I just think he had a bad night. I don't su- suspect too many or more of those nights um, because if they do, if he does, they will lose this series if he's not Kawhi uh, because you just don't know sometimes you can get on a PG and then they're making Lou Williams work on all, on defense. They, they're finding ways to put him in pick and roll play whether it's Monte Morris, whether it's uh, Murray, they find ways to get him to have to work on defense. So that's, you know, that's going to always take away a little bit from his offense. So, um, again, I don't suspect the Clippers to lose this series, mm-hmm. but the Nuggets have have the pieces, man. To they do have the pieces. I would definitely agree. Buckets. 
I, I would agree with that. I think if, if I'm the Nuggets, I don't want Kawhi to beat me. I want everybody else to beat me. I'm going to beat them. I'm going to make it tough. And I think that's what they did. They forced him to get the ball out of his hands. They flustered him at times. They made him take some contested shots. And there he got went to the bucket a couple of times. Probably could have got a foul here and there. Um, but for the most part, they played solid defense. I, you just got to – you got to make him get – uncomfortable and the way you do that is by sending people at them and not just no small people don't send no babies at them send some towers at them make him like oh snap these these tall people oh oh hey i got you and make him throw a tough pass because that's not really his game and i know people always say Kawhi can pass the ball yeah anybody can pass the ball because it's basketball if somebody's open but i'm talking about the iq and the savvy to know when the defense is coming off rip, you know that that's that stuff that J Kid had, that LeBron has, Rondo's have, CP3 players that really got vision that people don't consider is a quote unquote gift or a skill or whatever the case may be. Um, that that takes skill to be able to know. All right, they about to double me, and I hit you before you even get a chance to double me, but I still attack you in a way where you out of position. Now I got an easier chance to get a shot. Now all I got to do is make it. If I make the shot, we get the advantage. If I miss it, then, hey, it is what it is per se. But at least I created a higher probability for you. And I think that's going to be what the Nuggets going to have to do, like continue to put multiple people on them, continue to blitz them, and make it challenging for them. You can't stop superstars. You can't stop scores, but you can make it challenging for them. And if you can do that, you got a fighting chance. That's all you want to do at the end of the day, fighting chance, a fighting chance. So we'll see how these games play out tonight. Uh, I think if if the Joker don't play, it doesn't matter what you do. I think the Clippers still end up winning. They need everybody to be healthy if the Nuggets want to have a chance. That's just what it is. They need yeah, I mean, to beat the Clippers, you need a full team. Like, we, we have to just be honest. The Clippers are a good team. Right. I'm not going to be one of those. I mean, I don't want them to win, but I'm not going to be silly enough not to understand how good they are. Right. And you need to be fully loaded to beat them. You cannot be missing, especially a superstar. You make a miss a role player because you can hope that somebody can just step in and fill that. Right. But, like, you know, in the Dallas case, you can't miss a Porzingis and beat the Clippers. And no. now in the Nuggets case, you can't miss a Jokic and beat the Clippers. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's know. put on a, uh, a Luka Doncic performance and score 60 or 42 and triple double type dot vibes. Yeah, but I, I, I just think it'd be harder for Murray to do that because he's not bigger than them. Luka was bigger than them, so he was able to bully his way into buckets here and do that kind of stuff. That's it, right. You feel right. me? So I think Jamal Murray has that gift to go off, but against this team is going to be a little, a little bit more difficult because they have they have more length and more size to contain a smaller Murray. So that's why having Jokic is very apparent. Um, I, I don't necessarily know who's going to win tonight, but I still got the Clippers in six. So technically, in my head, it doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah, I still think Clippers going to win tonight if Jokic don't play. But if they if if Joker don't play. If he does play, it may be challenging. I think they probably edge it out because they, they did the, – the first game was a blowout, even with everybody. Yes. It wasn't yeah. even close. So, we'll see. We'll find out tonight. But on to – The East. The East, man. Wow. What a change of events. Ooh. The Toronto Raptors <gasps> was one game. Oh, dinosaurs. One game of being probably swept. I'm not even going to cap. Kimba threw the amazing pass. Mm-hmm. They go ahead by two. And my man, my OG man. OG Aben- OG OG is an OG. Point five seconds on the clock. This is probably by far going to go down in history as one of those Derek Fishers uh, – Shots that you be like, oh, my God, the Ray Allen tip outs. This is up there. This is up there because this could have been the series right here. He all got right. a all half court, all inbound pass, caught the ball, had enough time to catch down his feet, shoot the ball over Jalen Brown's hand, and win the game. And hit you with the 2K pose. 
and hit him with the 2K pose. I don't know if people really paid attention. He hit the jump shot. He shot it and went, ah. That mean it was green. When they do the pose, it was green. When he shot it and he did the pose, I knew it was green. I said, oh, that's green. That's It was a green relief. <laughs> it was green, baby. That's how I saw it. When he shot it and did the pose, oh, it's green. I, I wouldn't even worry. Bro, yeah. now we got a series, man. It's 2-2. Two, two. They end up winning game four, and now it is 2-2, two, two, and it's 0-0 zero, zero all over again, man. It's Toronto. That's out of three, man. That's out of three. Our, our scrappy team, man, and they didn't want to lose. They found a way to scrap the fight. They should have probably won game three easier than what they did because they was winning that game. And I don't know, Boston is a great team. They have a lot of weapons, but Boston can sometimes go get cold. Boston can sometimes have difficult times shooting the ball. Jalen Brown didn't shoot the ball very well game four. And they can struggle from the field or whatever the case may be. And if you can make them struggle – from the field, you have a fighting chance of beating them, and that's what Toronto has done. Scrappy, they've been gritty, they've been getting on a loose ball. My man, Lowry, I love Kyle Lowry. Lowry, I, I will play for Kyle Lowry because Lowry, he may not have the glitz and glory, but he's he's a dog. Kyle Lowry is a dog that's gonna put his body on the line, put everything he got on the line, and I I feel like Kyle Lowry now with a championship in his belt. He play like you think that some people that get a championship, they be like, all right, I can just chill and get my back. Kyle Lowry, my, bro, he doesn't play like he even has a championship. He plays like I want to win another one. I ain't never won it before. I'm getting on loose balls. I'm playing with the grid. I'm sticking everybody, and I, he's the heart of that team, bro. Kyle Lowry is the heart of that team, and I feel like the Raptors got a chance now. Yeah, man. You know, I told you I picked him in seven. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how they how this goes. Even though I picked them in seven, uh, I I'm more curious to see a Miami Boston Eastern Conference Finals. Mm. Even though I picked Toronto, because I just think that a Miami Boston's Eastern Conference Final is just flames, mm. just pure flames. I just see that as a flamish type series. But again, you know, I still got Toronto at seven. And uh, it should be interesting tonight, man, to see how Toronto, if they can go up 3-2, or can Boston answer the call and do they Dougie? Because right now, you feel me, Toronto hitting them with that whoa, and yeah. they ain't really responded just yet. So. They, 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 they hitting them. They hitting them hard, too. So we'll see. Game, game five is tonight. I think that I think Boston will get on the right track and win game five. Toronto will win game six, and and, and, and then it's a toss-up. I really don't know who's going to win game seven, but I'll pick a team when it gets there, if we get there, per se. Um, but now, the series that Mark and the team that Mark said, the team that Mark said is going to the Eastern Conference Final and possibly the NBA Finals. The Miami Heat. They let one get away. They really did. They let one get away. Well, I think they let one get away after Milwaukee let one get away. Because in game three, Milwaukee allowed for Miami to beat them 41 to 17 in the fourth or something like that. Mm -hmm. Some ridiculous numbers of them natures. And yeah, then Miami dropped the egg. It got cold out there with the heat. It yeah, got real cold. Because it's winter. Winter's coming around corner. Yeah, yeah. But it dropped down a few degrees. It wasn't yeah. hot. It wasn't. It wasn't hot. Hot. It was nah, cold. nah. And so, um, I, I suspect Miami to close this one out when they play again, just because I think Jimmy Butler understands like you don't want to be that team to lose a 3-0 lead and to lose a series. Like, you don't want to be that team. Right. Like, if Jimmy Butler thought that he was not getting respect before, let you blow a 3-1-0. Let you blow a 3-0 lead. Yeah. Oh, oh, you, all, all, all respect is out the window. Major out the window. Yeah. Time out the window. It, it's, it's all the way bad if they blow a 3-0 lead 
to Milwaukee. And we don't know how bad Giannis' injury is because he did get hurt in game four. He re-injured his ankle. And so we don't know how that's going to be. We don't know if he's going to be able to play. I feel like if Giannis don't come back, game five, the Miami Heat will end up winning this. It's just – look, look. Miami had that game still. They did. And the ref gave them a call of their lifetime. They gave the Bucks a call of their lifetime. I feel like it was a makeup call for that call they called on Giannis. <laughs> because in reality, we know that call does not get called. He threw up a layup. And they caught a blocking foul. Man, the man was damn near out of bounds, okay? And, and he had no chance of making that layup. And he and, and, and the ref said, look, 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 I'm going to call him. Oh, block foul. All right, two free throws. And you want to know that he wasn't supposed to call that call because the dude missed the first free throw. He missed I blame, I blame Gordon Drogi because I feel like in that situation, it's a bang-bang play, right? You may get the charge, you may get the block. But if you just slide over and just play on his defense mm-hmm. instead of falling or something like that, then you live with the results of can he make the shot or not. I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation with that caliber of a player to where I'm letting the referee decide. Mm-hmm. Because folks end up challenging it, but it's like, are they really going to overturn that in that situation? Think about it. Are they really going to make an overturn? But no. Like, no. It, so, um, you know, DiVincenzo uh, went to the line, missed the first one. Uh, as Rasheed Wallace would say, ball don't lie. Yeah. Ball don't lie. It didn't and lie. So, but they yeah. was able to uh, – shout out to my man. I can't get his name right now. Milliton. Mil- Chris Mil- Milton. Mil- Milton. Milton. I call him Milton. What the hell? Mil- 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 Milton, man. He willed that team to victory. He wasn't going to let that team lose. He didn't want that team to lose. He needed to do something. He did it. He's been a bum this is the whole series, so I'm glad he did something. Well, you know, sometimes when you play against elite wing defenders, they got some people that can get in your skin, man. They, Jimmy Butler, Iggy, bruh, they play Bam Bam. They all play great defense. They all play solid uh, Crowder. They are some scrappy dudes, man, like scrappy. Like real scrappy, they not they don't care how big you is. They're strong. They they like they like bruh bruh. I don't care if you six one six nine six twenty. You gonna get this five piece twenty piece to the jaw easy. I ain't scared of you. They one of those. If they felt like you bullying them, they gonna check you real. Hey yo son, what's up? You got problems? We got problems. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like Miami ain't the ones you want to mess with. Like we talked about last show, Jimmy B ain't even inviting his family. That lets you know where his mental at. His mental is championship or bust. That's where it's at with it. And so they're just on a different level. I'm just going to tell you this. If Miami blows a 3-0 lead, if they blow a 3-0 lead, yo, we, we going to have some t- talking to do. We gonna have man, some. Listen, we gonna have some. Talk. Like now, Miami is that uh, inner city team. Like we was looking at, like high school sports. Miami, that inner city school. You feel me? They got a few white boys that can that can shoot the lights out. Right. And then they got all the brothers that just hood that don't care. They just hoop. Right. right. They at school. You know, they they the dudes that be at school. They be chilling, but they just hoop. Back. And that's you know Miami got that got that uh, you know got that feel so that's why I think you like Miami because they're a relatable team. Mm-hmm. They a team that you know us both being uh, SoCal kids, we seen a lot of them. Ki- we seen a lot of them schools that just got a couple of snipers and then a bunch of brothers that's just about that. Yeah, and it's just it's just you just respect it. But if they brought us three on lead, I mean you look like a Valley school. That's so nice. <laughs> Looking real, real bad. Um, but we're going to see, man. Hopefully Giannis is able to play because, you know, I don't know. And what, what, what screamed, this tells me here is – He screamed when he hurt his ankle. I know. You, you I, know I, when you scream? Yeah. You know, for, it's like it's a difference between an ah, like ah, and then ah. Yeah. It, it hurt. I know it hurt. <laughs> I know it hurt. I know. I, I, I'm going to say this. What Giannis is going to have to do if they get eliminated, I, I really believe this, is 
And so I think he needs to develop a mid range and in the post game, like a more. Yeah, come to Fresno, man. I can listen. His his father in law, soon to be father in law, lives out here in Fresno. Right. You come to Fresno, I can get Giannis right. I got him. He just come see, come see your boy. Come see your boy. I know what he needs to work on. I can get him right. And here's the thing: I won't even charge the man. No charging. You know that's bad if you ain't gonna charge him now. I, I don't need to charge Giannis because I feel like it, he's gonna pay me back in another way. Right. You know I mean? he, he may connect me with somebody in Milwaukee, and next thing you know, I'm on my way being on like a, a player development guy. So I mean, I feel like you know the guy. You got more post moves than the king. You said what? You got more post moves than the dream. No, I ain't got more post moves. I just understand where he can get his money at and what will make him good. Okay. Because developing a post game is an over-the-time thing. You feel me? I'm just asking for a week of his time so we can work on specific things that as he, in his own offseason, as he develops as a player, he can continue to enhance. I'm just showing him, you know, that's why I'm not going to charge. It's just showing him, you know, you know, then I get to hang out with Giannis. I get to take the pictures and yeah, man, it's my boy. So, come I'm to Fresno, Giannis. I got you, bro. Reese has got him. <laughs> I got you, bro. But here's my thing. I just feel like Giannis, and I think first first and foremost, he's going to have to work on his footwork. Before you even do any kind of post work, you got to get your footwork right. And you got to get your footwork to a point where you can, you know, do some things out of the post. Because everything in basketball is footwork. I played against dude. Um, or play with a dude and got um, schooled by a dude by the name of Mel, or whatever the case may be. This dude, if you've seen the dude, you'd be like, man, I'm about to move this dude out the way. He light butt, you know what I'm saying? He light in the butt, he tussy foot, whatever the case may be, right? But when you when you actually, when he was teaching me, like, footwork and how you can move and all this stuff, and cra- bro, the man so damn strong, he's so strong, it was crazy because it's deceptive, but he was telling me the importance of how you can move your feet and create an advantage without even dribbling the ball. You get what I'm saying? And he was telling, like, a lot of people don't do that. They just go out there and use their athleticism, go hoop, and it works for them. But when they play against a better competition that can, you know, stop their go-to move and they don't have counters, they don't have no, no way to create for themselves, then they struggle. You know what I'm saying? And so – I think Giannis got to work on his footwork, get the post game, and then live, live with the turning face. Bro, he damn near seven foot. Do what AD can do. Turn, get the ball out the post, front, shoot a mid-range off the backboard or something. Shoot, shoot those. You can eat all up in there because ain't nobody going to guard you. Listen, man, I, I, I'm going to save it for another show, maybe when we're done with the NBA season. And we can go through a, like a, a breakdown of what players need to do to become better. Mm. Because I have some stuff for Giannis or some suggestions for Giannis and Milwaukee. So if they don't win this series and we send them home, I definitely give all my suggestions. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say that. But you are right on track with some of my suggestions. And we'll talk about that on a later day. Yeah, yeah. That'll be, that'll be dope. I like that. We could do a series called "How to How These Players Can Improve," and we focus like player player at a time, one player at a time. Um, especially, we are focused on people that got eliminated. With some ways, Damian later, Damian Lillard can improve his game. Hey, you always can improve, and yeah, I think that'd be dope. I think that'd be dope. And we you are, like that? You like that? I like that. No, 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 no cap. I like yeah. that. We we focus on one player at a time. The, the episode will probably be a little bit shorter, but. It'd be more is exclusive to that player, you know what I'm saying? And I think that that'd be dope, you know what I'm saying? So definitely, I like that. But anyway, man, um, that's all we got for today, man. Anything you want to say uh, to wrap up for for hoops, man? No, nah, um, there's some coaching positions out there from teams that's been eliminated. Uh, I'm curious to see who gonna get hired and whatnot. You know, the Steve Nash hire was surprising to a lot of people. My man Stephen A. got to slow down though with the whole white privilege thing. Yeah, he was he. I mean, because Doc Rivers, Jason Kidd, and Derek Fisher did the same exact thing as Steve Nash. Same thing. And but 
Steve Nash at the time also has uh, player development because he worked in a Warriors organization. So uh, I just think that, you know, I think Steve Nash is going to be a great hire, especially if KD and Kyrie is the one who endorsed his hire um, because you you want your stars to have a coach that they respect. That when they look over, they're like, okay, Steve, yeah, we, we hear you. And, um, you know, I'm just curious to see Steve, his all, Steve Nash's offense, uh, his offensive philosophy, his defensive philosophy. So I'm going to definitely be paying attention to Brooklyn next year mm-hmm. uh, a lot more just, just based on the coaching aspect because, you know, me being in the coaching profession, uh, I, I want to get better. And I think Steve Nash may have some uniqueness to his style. And I think, and if it's not a uniqueness, it's going to be similar to Golden State and how they utilize KD. Mm. Um, because, you know, with Kyrie, Levert, um, Dinwiddie, they got similar pieces to the Warriors that can that can make them, them play a great style. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's my thing. I'm, I'm curious. And again, I got KD for MVP next year. Mm. That can happen. That, 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 KD that, for MVP. That can happen. It's going to be good to see KD back. It's going to be good to see the league next year, but we still got this year, man. But other than that, man, that's all we got for y'all. Y'all let us know in the comments below who y'all got in these games, who y'all see or foreseeing in the finals or whatever the case may be. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Take care. Stay blessed. Always remember to talk that talk. See y'all soon. Peace!